intro music. Yeah. Woo. I'm joined by EcoBoost Engine, the community manager, Star Trek Fleet Command, so that you could kind of get to know him a little bit better. Yes. I was waiting for you to tell me when I'm allowed to talk. I'm not trying to mess with the creator magic. The creator magic. It is beautiful. My camera looks amazing. And you look like you are in the middle of the pandemic 2020 and have not bought a solid webcam yet. My webcam is great, okay? It's an HD. It said HD. Uh, it was 30 bucks. I think the cord is about this long. So the whole premise of this very bad video, everybody's watching. We'll edit out all the places where I'm negative because cool. Scopa doesn't like negative. Scopely only wants positive. Uh, Scopely is uh, very much. All right. So we're going to start with getting to know our new community managers. You have been out in the open for what? Three weeks now? Two weeks now? Almost a month. Oh, has it really been that long? I think this is like whenever people are watching this, it'll probably be about a month. Because oh, yeah. I've been officially signed on the dotted line for almost two month and a half we were taking yeah exciting can, can you tell us a little bit about your background or you might want to be might not want to be specific about where you worked before but yeah, yeah i was talking a little bit about this on dj's podcast so community managers just generally don't talk about past games we've worked on one because it's pretty easy to figure out who that person is if you just go look at their social media or their community channels be like oh i know who it is um but the other thing is we just want to focus on what we're working yeah. on now and we might want to try different things or, you know, you basically just shed your identity every time you go to a new game. But um, the stuff that I have worked on the past, I've been working in the gaming industry for about five years. I've been doing community management for four. I've worked on a variety of titles, both on PC and mobile in my past. So I'm relatively versed in this sort of professional gaming world when it comes to like Gaming in general, I've been playing video games for as long as I can remember. It's always been a piece of me. Um, I I sometimes have to explain to people, and I'm sure you and everyone else watching this have to also explain why video games are just so important to us. Um, it's not just a game. It's where we make friends. It's where we have like really fond, cool memories with people. We have experiences that you can't have in the real world sometimes. So... You've been with four companies in five years. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. They churn me out every six months. You know, Sorry. I will probably won't be. Makes here. no, I'm, I'm can't hold a job. Can't hold. <laughs> you're lucky you're self-employed. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you haven't fired yourself. At this Eco's point. taking notes like he's churlish. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Y'all can't tell uh, me and DJ and the likes. We like to have fun with Eco. Because he jokes around a lot. It's nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that you, you've said this a couple of times, Rev. Um, I like to be as down to earth as possible. Yeah. Um, there's obviously going to be times I say things that people aren't happy about. And there'll be times when I can, I need to put on that professional. I understand how important and serious this is. Because like I just explained, like this is more than a game for most, just about all of us. Like I get that when People are upset. Something's going on that you need to make sure that they un everyone that you're speaking to understands that you understand it's an issue. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, when things are good, I like to just try and be as much of myself as possible. And I do it with you all the time, Rev. We actually, believe it or not, community, Rev and I talk more often than you think. By choice or I mean, by it's necessity? Not by choice. I, don't okay. think it's, I don't think either of us want to speak to each other. It just has to happen sometimes. Yeah, I'm Eco's unpaid intern. It's great. I oh have my to, gosh. I have to uh, message him every Monday morning to remind him of the things that he's got to do this week. Yeah, and let me just not help you make content for your well-being. I'll just, I'll just live. Well, I mean, you've been here two months, so in about four months you'll be gone, going by previous history. So I was waiting for. I'm waiting for the rev that I'm used to seeing in his YouTube videos, where he just comes out and starts yelling at me for all the things I'm doing poorly. Well, this is the get to know you session. We're not going to yell oh, at you. Yeah, this is getting to know Eco. Not yet. Yeah, we'll we'll yell at you later. Um, cool. Have you not fixed the bug with the pink graphic display error yet? No. Yeah, with my infinite knowledge of coding, yeah. I have yet to address that one. How about the rounding issue with the surveys? That just they, so everyone is very clear, it, okay. I don't know how to code at all. I am a nerd behind a keyboard. I just relay information and talk to people. To, 
make sure I understand what's going on and then try to play the game. Just not very well. Rev and I actually had a teaching session on one of my days off where I'm like, this is where I am. Please help me. <laughs> Clarification. Rev had a teaching session and Eco had a, a, um, you were stuck. <laughs> I'm learning now though. Yeah. It's good. I'm, so, um, Ops 27, I make sure I come in. I do all of my dailies. I make sure I have something good. mining. I'm doing my botany bay loop for rep. I'm making sure I'm in Klingon territory, farming hostiles for rep, and that I progress and continue on with the events. And then I do the missions. I have I have a Stella. I have Ooh. a Franklin at tier five. Not bad. I, I understand the Franklin is awesome, but when does it get awesome? Well, it's only awesome for swarms. Right, but I'm... Tier five, and I'm trying to kill level 28 swarms and can't do it yet. Have you done any of your Franklin research? Think so. Oh boy, we'll cover that in the next teaching session. <laughs> yes. We just need to have a series teaching with Rev. No, I mean, it's great. Eco, I mean, it's our dumb community manager who like, doesn't know anything. All jokes about the game. aside, when we were together Saturday, it was you literally had a tier one botany bay that couldn't do anything because you didn't know that Cadet Scotty gave it the warp range needed. I didn't. To go in augment space. I was like, space, how so. do I get the warp range? Do I need plutonium? Like, what am I doing, Rev? Yeah. And you're like, hey, that's Scotty. I'm like, it's that simple. It's that simple. Actually, would be a great series. And what we should do is also hook you up with, like, Beck Likes Plants, because she's a newer player. She's only been playing a couple months. And then y'all can, you know, learn together. Yeah, I mean, so. hopefully this is correct. I don't think anyone came in expecting me to learn the entire game in a month and a half. I'm... I'm hoping no one expected that. Um, I apologize. Only if the I'm VIPs. Anybody. I apologize if I'm ruining that for some people, but I am actively playing and trying, and it's just a lot to digest. And this is great too, because just like Reb was saying, I, I want I like talking to the community like they're in the room. They are in the room. They're here with us always. There's a lot of things that long-term players just know baseline, knowledge-wise, and like coming in with a fresh set of eyes. I think it's cool mm -hmm. that I can help make a lot of content and help you guys with content hopefully on like this is where i ran to a roadblock as a new player starting two months ago this is the sort of information that we need to get out to people so let me uh, peel back the onion on eco a little bit more before gaming what did you do oh geez before gaming all right so i was in college i got a degree in sociology i then worked in retail for a bit so i was really really big into fitness for a while so i was a manager assistant manager at a gnc which is a office uh, depot nutrition. for me really yeah i was it was a nutrition like supplement store over on the east coast it's here too but i was on the east coast at the time and then i worked in jewelry after that i'm a certified diamondologist so if anyone needs help getting jewelry or diamonds i can help i was run, i was helping with a jewelry store managing it in a casino and then i met a lovely lady and we'd actually known each other from high school we weren't like high school sweethearts but we'd always just been friends um and we re reconnected after college and she was living on the west coast so i'm like well your career is more important and established than mine is i can kind of sell jewelry anywhere i'll go out there and so that's when i moved to los angeles i took a few months off because it was the first time since i was like 16 that i hadn't had a job so i was just like chilling for a little while i actually had an interview at a police department here in Los Angeles, I passed the written, the physical portions, and then I got the call that they wanted to hire me for a customer support role in gaming. And I was like, I could probably try and be a cop at any time. Gaming is one of those things where it's relatively difficult to sort of get your entry into. Well, let me, let me hit you with this one. You actually like Star Trek. Yes. All right. Name me your favorite Star Trek episode. I don't know the episode names. Uh, I'm well, not that big of a I'm not that big of a fan, but I like Star Trek. Struggling. What I'm Star struggling Trek right. have you enjoyed right, so let me, far? Let me give you my Star Trek past. Okay. Right? So I always thought I was more of a Star Wars fan than a Star Trek fan. Okay. The reason being is that like Star Wars was very prevalent in my house. My brother, who's older than me, was a huge Star Wars fan. And obviously I looked up to my older brother. I wanted to be like him. He likes Star Wars. I like Star Wars. Growing up, however, I remember always coming home from school and at 6 p.m. on, oh man, what was that old school network that Star Trek used to air on? Rather? Spike TV? No, not Spike. Oh, well, I did air on Spike TV. Uh, it, it was a different one. Okay. I used to go every day at 6, I would watch Voyager. And I oh, really, well, this really, is really, before really... my time then because I didn't watch Voyager when it was 
life. That was like the late 90s, early 2000s. I'm a bigger Star Trek fan than you, you're saying? I'm saying oh. I didn't have access to like cable because wow. I was poor. Rev not is a poser, doesn't even care about Star Trek. First of all, I can throw the picture on the screen of me being one years old <laughs> watching The Next Generation. Um, try to shame me. They've seen it. They know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'd always watch Voyager, and I got really, really into Voyager. And that would have been um, UPN. That would have been UPN. That was the one, UPN. Oh, my gosh, thank you. So it was UPN. I used to watch it every single week. Every time they ran reruns, I would watch it. Um, and one of the big things that happened was the Star Trek series finale, the Star Trek Voyager series finale was happening. And I was really excited about it. And so my parents made a big deal about it. They ordered Chinese food for the entire family. We all got snacks and ice cream oh. from the grocery store. And we watched the series finale as a family. And that is my fondest Star Trek memory to date so far. And then I started watching Enterprise after that. Enterprise was good, but I didn't think it was quite as good as Voyager. And then, you know, at this point, I'd gotten into later on when I was a little bit older. I think I was probably in high school at the time now. And so I was, I just had a lot of different things going on in my life. And so I didn't follow, keep up with Star Trek as much. And it wasn't one of those things where it was easy to like go watch all of the next generation unless you bought this, like the whole set. And I didn't have the money to go buy the whole set. Right. So yeah. now. Kids today will never know the struggle. Yeah. No, they have all of the TV shows at their fingertips. If you wanted to watch a season of TV, you had to go to like buy fye or best buy or walmart and find the set and buy that one season and convince your parents to buy that one season for you and you'd rewatch that one season because you didn't have enough money to go buy the other ones um i remember my first season will take it was dragon ball z actually like futurama for me broke it into seasons yep so so you mentioned uh, then, star wars though yeah star wars or star trek what are you at now are you be honest it's nothing wrong star trek now Star Wars has definitely started venturing more into storytelling with the series than the movies were. So, so Jedi's at their foundation are just cool, right? You're a space wizard with a laser sword. How is that not cool? Okay. Um, but when you're talking about the universe and the series as a yeah. whole, Star Trek is better, in my opinion. Reason being is that like you can watch past Star Trek series today and it holds up. Like maybe the graphics or like the CGI aren't as good as they are today, but like the baseline story and the event that's happening holds up and it's very good. Um, I was very impressed by it, and I just think that Star Wars and I'm gonna get a few Star Wars people that are all like, "You didn't read the 26 books and you don't know the back lore and like all these things hey disney got so. rid of the extended universe so it doesn't matter anymore they have to suck it up um, So i just don't think that star wars is as deep and i think that star like nothing compares oh I, I don't remember the episode name but what's the one where picard basically gets knocked out for 20 for 20 minutes he goes to that other little pocket world and he has a full life with a wife and kids this isn't this was in like season five I'm you know, talking to, about the beacon that yeah, basically I'm takes trying to think of the, the title, but I don't, so I'm really bad with title. Like I know several and titles you're of episodes. Me what my favorite episode well, is? Well, some of them stick out. Like example, Measure of a Man from Next yeah, Generation, yeah. where Data gets put on trial. That title will that always one, stick I just out. I actually watched a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've got all of them memorized. He experienced a whole life and then gets ported back to his body, and he has to just like live with that. Yeah, like it's, nothing, and, and they nothing reuse, in Star Wars measures up to that. And they reused that story in Deep Space Nine in a different way where Miles O'Brien got Spoilers, tortured. I haven't watched Deep Space Nine yet. Well, well, you've had 30 years where Miles, <laughs> o, where Miles <laughs> O'Brien still... gets tortured. Uh, by That's how they do prison sentences in this particular episode is they go into your brain and make you live a life as a prisoner, but it only takes like a couple hours. But you experience the entire reality. Similar to what happened to that is Ricard. miserable. Oh it's a God. very, very thought provoking episode. So, wow. Oh uh, yeah. That reminds that, me of some other uh, sci-fi shows that are coming out too that do similar things where it's like it's all in your mind, but it's mm -hmm. not actually happening, kind of thing. So, of the five Star Trek shows out now, any of them that you enjoy? The lower decks. You lower okay. Lower decks. Wow. Uh, is that any like 
Scopely recency bias because we happen no, to be well, in the lower decks arc or we're not in the lower decks arc anymore. We're in an in anthology. We're just, we're celebrating discovery, the original series and the next generation. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. So, okay. No. So I watched lower decks <laughs> because last month we were in lower decks, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch the content that is currently out so that I can understand and communicate with everyone, all of the community. Right. And I binged it, I think, in like a week, probably less. There's only two uh, seasons, watched... so that wasn't too There's only two seasons, yeah. so it wasn't that much. But I like went on tears where I was watching like eight or nine episodes in a sit. I was actually watching it when I was going to Mission Chicago. So I watched a bunch of it, was in Chicago for a little while, and then came back and I finished it. And then I think Lower Decks is very good. And like, I understand that it's a very different art style and sort of theme than most people uh, are used to. Mm -hmm. But I think it really holds to at least like the lore the backstory the characters all of the fun references in there from like previous trek episodes and things that are going on mm -hmm. um i think they did a good job with it i really liked it it is definitely unique i like that but it's also geared more towards people of our generation yeah millennials with the rick and morty writing style and art yeah. style and everything have you watched strange new world yet no no Oh, well, no Strange New Worlds content coming, everybody. Eco hasn't watched it, so it can't come out in the game. Yeah, you, you'll know what's coming out based on what I'm researching at the time. So if you ever want to insight, I'm kidding. Well, he also said he hadn't watched D Space Nine, so there went that spoiler. Um, see, you hate uh, to see it. No D Space Nine I'm this kidding, year, by the way. Confirmed. There is no bearing on what I'm watching with what content is coming out. Rev, don't listen to Rev. He lies. I've never lied to you guys once. <laughs> Who are you guys going to believe? Community manager. Content creator. Cont that should be an easy one for people. I'm going to let them decide for themselves. Leave your comment down below on who you think is being yeah. more truthful, myself or Rev. Make sure to also hit the subscribe button, smash the like button for this video, and also enable post notifications so that you get with the bell, so that you get a nice notification every single time uh, Rev Deuce posts a new video. You want to plug my merchandise website too while you're at it? No, I never wear anything that's okay. on your merch website. Okay, cool, cool. Got a nice <laughs> rose gold colored hoodie I think you'd like. but uh, Rose gold would not go well with my complexion. Do you see how pale I am? Same, which is like why it would, I don't I It would gold. wash me out. That's why I'll wear like black and gray and whites. And if Dark I go if I go anywhere, it's going to be like, you know, a blue plaid shirt or something. Yeah, yeah. plaid. It's always, it's always classy. That's a great thing with me. Like, I just shaved my head for the day, put on like, a shirt that has buttons on it. I'm good. How would you define your community management style? I would say that so far from the people who've gotten to witness you on places like Discord and everything, still pushing you to do things like Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, more, and YouTube, which is why we're here. What style of CM would you say that there are? Because there's definitely different styles and paradigms of how you approach the community. Yeah. So I think, I tr like I said before, I try to be more personable um i'm totally okay with people making fun of me and joking around i will joke back with the community as well i just like i will always double check myself because sometimes things get lost in text i always like hey this was a joke if i offended you please let me know um i try and be as much of a normal human gamer as possible because i am a normal human that loves video games i feel like that's what makes me relatively effective at my job hopefully um so i would say that when it comes to social media like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you, for those platforms, generally you try to develop a voice, mm -hmm. um, like a writing style that is pretty uniform so that it sort of like aligns with the brand and makes people feel like they're coming to a Star Trek page, Star Trek Fleet Command page, especially specifically. Um, but obviously you will have your own little personality quirks in there. Like generally when two people are writing on a page, you can tell the difference between one and another because they're slightly different. But I generally try to have a voice for those. So it's a little less personable just because I want it to fit within what I'm trying to build for the experience. Um, but if you're talking to me on Discord and I'm going to bring Reddit back, um, when I'm on Reddit, um, I'll be communicating very much just like this. Well, what is something that you've done in a previous CM job that went really well, you were excited about, that you think could bring in here? Like, what are some of the, the thought-provoking ideas? What do you got here? What excites us? Tell yourself. 
So I think that they're. I can't give any specific examples, which makes like, it, like if of, you could bring no, things I, here. It makes it run out of steam a little bit, but I'm yeah. going to like give an example of yes. This is what I would like to do. There's no guarantee I can do it. I'm going to try my best. I need you to like clip that, and before I say anything, I need you to like put that up there with like a red flashing border at all times. Um, but I mean, so I think there's a lot of not the room. breaking news lower third of like confirmation. Eco says this is coming to the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. Exactly that. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Fred, for taking my words and completely changing them. Um, there are a lot of really cool community events that I want to do. So I got okay. to go to Mission Chicago. And man, if I could get us to do a live in-person event at a convention, that would just be awesome to meet everybody. I mean, I would be there. It's why I don't mind showing my face because I think it's important to for people to know who I am and know that I'm a human. Um, You've really been stressing but, that point in this interview so far. Like, I'm human, everybody, I promise. Well, I mean, a lot of times things can get lost. It's like, oh, this, this account can be shared by multiple people. It's just a robot behind a screen. It's just some person they're having be there, but they don't, they're do not they not actually invested. Like, Scopely definitely wanted a person that was going to be forward-facing and communicating and alive. So... All right, welcome back, beloved Thank viewers. To, uh, we, had, we had some slicing to do. <laughs> yeah, to, to the censored edition of the Star Trek <laughs> Fleet Command, get to know your new community manager podcast. Um, we're, we're, we're on community events. <laughs> we're on community events. Uh, Give so, me an example of a community event, though. What does that even mean to you? Because when we see community events in the game, they're basically like Rialto Wars, which is something that Server 20 came up with that the game adopted, or like the crossover leaderboards, which for now are not that exciting for most players because it hasn't been fleshed out. But what do you see a community event at? Because when I see community events, I'm thinking like what Clash of Clans does. You know, I mean, we've got tournaments that we're televising, and we've got cross-server competition but actual competition my ship goes in the system or fighting sure. you know what what, you, what does that look like to you in this game so this is something that i actually have to tell a lot of people because when i'm telling people about my job they don't even know like what does a community manager even do yeah um so in-game events are the stuff that you're doing like like you said re reality wars and like territory control and like your daily events like those are in-game events Community events are stuff that happen generally outside of the game in a lot of ways. Like mm -hmm. when, so let's say the discovery just came out. It's like, oh, show us your best moment of you taking an insta warping somewhere and bringing another ship in you so that you could dominate a territory or capture event, right? So that people are coming, are doing and experiencing things in game, but the event is technically happening outside of the game because they're submitting content somewhere else or something else is going on or there's a giveaway so giveaway also if we were we were to do like like you said like your example was like two alliances going at each other and we wanted to like live cast that or a tournament or something like that technically they're watching it outside of the game the community events are things that generally happen mm -hmm. a mix of in and out of the game so i want to do really cool tournament but or community events like tournaments for example like it would be really cool if me and you could cast like two alliances battling it out against each other that or i want to do stuff that is exciting for people i want to do giveaways i want to try and see if we can all watch an episode of star trek together i want to celebrate really awesome stuff that's going on in game and let people that aren't in the game like what if they're at work and they see it something pop up it's like look at this cool clip that i just did that's going towards this community event like wow that enhances my experience and it makes it so that i can be excited to go play star trek fleet command later you know i want to do things that just is be is able to engage with the community whether you're playing or you're not able to play at that point in time and also get to earn free stuff like packs and gift cards and hopefully merch in the future but anyway but yeah, um... those, are, those are the <laughs> things i want to do i want to i want to have cool experiences that people can experience in and out of game if in this little show that will be heavily edited and condensed down and definitely not mention anything negative about the overlords. How what, long have we been talking for at this point? 30 like, minutes, actually? like a lot of editing. That's how long we've been talking. Um, it's like a DJ podcast. Now, if you could have everybody who watches this know one thing about you, like you just wanted this to be their impression of you in this game moving forward, what would it be? 
my faction reputation is under a hundred thousand. It's a fantastic answer. That's not going to bode well for me, is it? No, not at all. That's why I said it. Yeah. Um, Considering I just put out a video like what was it uh, less than a month ago of a level twenty who tri faction locked at ten million, and you're sitting there at level twenty seven, less than a hundred k on each. Yikes. Um. One thing they can take away from this interview, one thing to know about me. Um, I don't know if there's anything I could say. I just will try and prove through action mm -hmm. that I really care about this community. I want to see Star Trek Fleet Command not just succeed, but continue to grow. And I want to do cool things that not only am I excited about, that the mm -hmm. community is going to be excited about. And hopefully I can show you all of that in the coming months. And DS9 comes out this year, right? Any final words to the people before you're gone in four months? I want to thank you for bringing me on. And for also, for the community to know, Rev has been extremely helpful with uh, all the content creators are. But specifically with getting, Rev. With getting me up to speed, with helping me learn the game, with letting me bounce ideas off of him for certain events or things that I want to do. It's greatly appreciated. And that's why everyone like, keeps saying like, oh, this community is going to get you. We got torches and pick, pitchforks. Something's bad happens. We're going to burn you down. It's like, I haven't seen it. Everyone's been incredibly, incredibly inclusive and nice, just like the Star Trek community as a whole. Basically, y'all haven't been badgy enough for him. Now they're going to go just like be mean to me on purpose because I'm saying nice things. I, like I said, I only look at the future. I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not concerned with things that happened before I came around. Discovery no, season true. four. That doesn't confirmed. work because there's a ton of content. If I don't care about that content that came before me, then I'm bad. Oh man. So many things to edit. So little You're time. welcome for the hour long edit, by the way. Oh, dude, way more than that. No, we're not. We started at like three, a little bit after because I switched computers. For about every three minutes that need to be taken out, it's going to take about an hour. So, but you got to splice you, it. You, you got to make it nice. You wanted this. And that, everybody, is why I am a masochist for content creation. And I am so thankful that the overlords have loaned me their brand new community manager, the Ferrari of CM's EcoBoost engine. Do they have EcoBoosts inside of Ferraris? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt it as well. That would be hilarious, though. Imagine if, like, for my 20th year anniversary working on Star Trek Fleet Command, I get I buy myself a Ferrari and ask them to put an EcoBoost in it. I mean, it wouldn't surprise many of us if somebody at Scopely already had a Ferrari. So, anyway, my name's Rev, and I'm an instigator, and um, maybe one day we'll be able to release all this footage that you didn't see. Thanks for being here, Eco. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Rev. You yes. Keep it in the content vault. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.